first story. My wife of 10 years confessed. She was in love with my best friend and married me for him. Then she committed self-harm a week later. It sounds fake. It sounds like a drama script. Don't effing care. I need to get it out somewhere or I'm going to go nuts. We are from the same high school. Apparently, my wife has had a huge crush on my best friend since junior high. And my best friend knew about this. Back to my story. It's been 10 years since we got married, and she still loves him. That makes it 10 plus years of one-sided love from her to him, and 12 years of my one-sided love to her. She only got close to me, and dated me, so she could be in touch with my best friend. She wanted to be a part of his life, no matter what, so she chose me as a scapegoat. And here I thought, she loved me. How did I find this out? She told me three weeks ago. Why did she tell me? I decided we were ready for a child, and brought up the discussion over dinner. She told me she could make love with me, marry me, and even act like she loved me and obviously did a pretty damn good job at it. But she can't bear to give birth to a child that is mine and not his. She can't give birth to a child who looks like me and not like him. So she can't have my child. Then she left me. That day. She didn't even say sorry. Not that it will make it any better. But she did say she did her best. She did her best. And this is what it is. That's the end of the story. I have no more to tell. She just left, and is not picking up my calls, emails, texts, or whatever way of contacting her. I haven't reached out to my best friend either. I know they are not together. Actually, maybe I'll be happy for her if she does end up with him at this point. And here I am, not even feeling anything, and I'm not sure if this is normal. This feels like a big play. I'm not even sure if I even put this right in the text. I'm sorry. This is a mess, OP added in the comments. Thank you all for your concerns. Just to clear things up. 1. We did talk about kids before this. Couple times actually. But I wasn't very serious about it until now. She said, she wasn't really into having kids yet. And she just wanted to enjoy ourselves when we could. I didn't know that would mean so differently to her. 2. She made it clear that she wasn't seeking a relationship with my friend. She told me that she doesn't really imagine having a relationship with him. And that will be how it is for whoever knows how long. I know this sounds weird. But she told me that this whole one-sided love is a bit of a permanent habit of hers that she can't get rid of. Ever. I don't know if she sought therapy for this because I was out of my mind at the time to even ask about some of the questions I have and want her to answer. 3. Divorce. I'm not sure how I will deal with this. I really love this girl. This woman. To sound even more crazy, I still do. No, I don't intend to continue this marriage. This marriage was meant to break from the very start. Now that I think about it. I'm just too tired at the moment to even seek an attorney, psychiatrist, or therapist. I know I am also weird, but I want to talk to her first before doing things legally. There are still many things I want to ask her, talk about, hear about, and be mad about, but I just can't do any of them right away. 4. My buddy probably doesn't know that she still has feelings. Who would have known that a person could have one-sided feelings towards someone for over a decade? I don't intend on talking about it with him until some of the things are cleared up on my side. Thank you again for your care. I'm sorry I can't give the best response at the moment. Update 1. Hi all. Hopefully you have been well. Thank you all for your kind and comforting words. I really appreciate them. I'm not sure if this is an update or not. But I'm in a better mental state today. So let me get some stuff out. Let's get this started. It's long. And even though I am in a better mental state, I may not put these words together as I wanted to since I have so much to say. There are lots of TMIs in this post. Excuse my grammar as well. Let's start with my wife. Or what kind of person she was first. My wife, for one, is a good person. Or was a good person. At least the person I was with would be viewed as a good person from a social perspective. I'm not saying this to protect her. I'm giving you an idea of how people would view her in general, if you knew her. She can't pass by homeless people without giving them anything out of her purse. She can't let a friend be sad, and will do anything she can to comfort them. She is full of emotions, empathy, sympathy, love, etc. She volunteers every weekend for seniors and homeless people. Many more can be listed, but you get my point. She was pretty attractive too. That's why I fell in love with her. She was a charming, smart, and kind person. A dream girl. I wouldn't have asked for anyone else. We were all friends, as I have mentioned. And when she showed interest in me, I also eventually developed feelings for her pretty quickly. Why would I hesitate, like I said? She was like a dream girl to a man at least to me. For all I know, I was her first guy. She didn't ever sleep with another guy, and that I know for sure. Her family was strict, 
and she lived with them until marriage, so I wouldn't say she really had a chance to get physical with someone. So yes, I'm her first guy. I wouldn't in a million years suspect that all those times together were a lie. Well, she did a goddamn good job at keeping that dirty secret of hers. I was devoted to making this woman happy. I would have died to save this woman if I had to. I loved her to the core every inch of her. I did everything I could to make her happy. That's why it hurts so much right now to be betrayed. Or was it really a betrayal if she never loved me in the first place? Because I sincerely thought she loved me. I mean how would anyone pretend to ask for a kiss, hug and affection from someone for 10 plus years if they never loved them? Would you really want to cuddle up with a man you never loved? Would you really want to share the same bed with a man you never loved? Would you really want to hold someone's hand you never really loved? Would you really want to legally be married to a man you never loved? Can you really look into their eyes and say you love them with someone you never loved? For real. For over a decade. Really. Can someone be this good at acting? Wouldn't there have been at least the tiniest inch of me in her heart, reserved with feelings? Did she really? I mean really. Never. Loved me? Even once? For real? Not even once. Yes, I am probably in denial. And I probably will be for a long time. Because apparently, you can do all those things without actually loving them. Which I still can't believe. Now, an update on my current situation. I got up with my buddy last night, and asked him what's new, drank a bit, and finally, I brought this conversation up. It wasn't easy to bring it up. I mean to put it in literal text. My wife married me because she loved you. He was shocked, of course. It's probably just as much as I was. He didn't know what to say for a long time. It seems like she never contacted him, even after she left. To my surprise, other than our small dinner gatherings together that happened sometimes, she never really contacted him personally. To be honest, she didn't really join those dinner gatherings much either. I asked him, Did my wife ever say that she had feelings for you? To that, he mentioned, A long time ago, yes. She did say she had feelings for me. But that was like more than a decade ago, long before you two were dating, when we were all young and dumb. We talked for a long time about a lot of things. Mostly about our past, our school years, college years, life, everything. And now here I am, feeling guilt. I feel guilty to the point. It hurts my gut. He didn't have to be involved in this messy story. But my selfish arse decided it was a good idea to talk to him about it. I regret it. He said sorry, even though it was not his fault. I'm a terrible person for this. As for my wife, we are meeting up in two weeks. If you ask why in two weeks, she left an email saying she is in another country, because she also felt like she needed to go somewhere to put things together, and will return in two weeks. If you ask why I'm meeting up with her, she asks if it is okay with me. She wants to meet up for a talk. I agreed to it. I have lots of things to ask her. I haven't really had proper sleep for weeks. I'm tired. I'm sorry for the rant. I didn't mean to. Forgive me. Thank you for hearing me out again. Best wishes to you all. Final update. Hello to all. It's been quite a while since my last post. Things took a turn in a big way during those couple months. Some kind people sent me messages asking me how I was doing and what was happening. I couldn't answer any of it because I was too devastated to answer. So here is my update. To make things short, my wife died, and I am a widower. You may say, what the F, after reading this, but she died, and it was a self-harm. We met shortly after the email she sent me. Believe it or not, it wasn't pretty. I thought I could keep myself together, but I ended up being hideous. Never have I cried so much in my life, and never have I been so used in my life. I honestly, sincerely, and deeply felt the meaning of betraying. My conversation with her was basically a repeated routine of why you did this to me, how you could do this to me, why you married me, and why now you have chosen to reveal this to me. She didn't really give clear answers to my questions. She was mostly quiet, and she only gave answers that made me even more emotional. One thing I do remember her saying was, I'm sorry. After some more meaningless conversations, I said I wanted a divorce. Not loving me was one thing, but deceiving me for a decade is another. She agreed to it. Since we needed a year of separation before marriage, we got separated, and that was it. I told her to honestly F off, and never show herself in front of me again, and she died. A week after she left, I got a phone call from my mother-in-law, alerting me that she had died. She took a pill, and she didn't wake up again. She didn't leave any notes or messages for anyone. She just left for good, and that was all. The funeral took place, but I couldn't go. My best friend went, and with that, I hope she is happy with that. It's been three months since she died. 
A deep trauma has been placed inside me, and I have been seeking therapy since. It hasn't gotten better. But with that, I am functioning as the bare minimum of a human being at least. I don't think I'll ever find an answer to this incident. My life has been torn apart, and I, my entire self, can't function as it used to. I'm not even sure if I have put this post in a righteous form that would make sense. If it's a mess, I'm sorry. This was the best I could do. Some may find my story disturbing, or some may even find it made up. I don't really mind if you find it a lie. I myself have a hard time believing this, and am still processing. I guess I will never find out what her true feelings were or what she wanted to do with me. But if one of her goals was to haunt me for the rest of my life, she did a goddamn good job of that. This is the last post I will ever make and will ever post. There is no meaning in life anymore for me, but I will have to go on. I really appreciate your concerns and kindness over the past three months. I wish you all well. Thank you. Second story. My sister's fiancé revoked me from being a mo for my sister because I'm divorced and his parents won't accept someone like me being a mo, so I walked off from the wedding. Now my sister called off the entire wedding. For background, Stella and I are identical twins 29F, and we will both be 30 when her wedding comes around this fall. I had her as my maid of honor eight years ago, and she promised me that I could be hers when her wedding came around. I have two kids, 6F and 3F. They're the flower girls. My marriage fell apart just over two years ago, due to a stillbirth and my husband's infidelity. My parents and sister were the only reason I didn't drown in the stress, loneliness and total abandonment of my spouse. I was a total mess. I went to therapy, got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, quit drinking, and I owe a lot of it to my amazing sister. She's the reason why I kept chasing down my ex for child support, when he suddenly stopped paying, he suddenly switched from world's best dad to deadbeat dumb arse, so quickly that my ex Mill is disgusted with him. Stella and John 35M got engaged last year. His parents are paying about 60% of the wedding. Our parents are paying 30%, and Stella and John are paying for the rest themselves. The biggest caveat is that they must be married in John's family's church, at full mass with communion. The family is on board, because this is going to be a very big wedding. Tonight, Stella had invited me to dinner, as they had finally reserved a date for the church and reception, assuming it was to formally ask me to be her mo. I was excited since I haven't been to a wedding party aside from my own wedding. John was with her, which was weird because Stella didn't mention him coming at all in our texts about the dinner. We hugged like usual, but John didn't, weirder. After we got our drinks, they got to it. In a nutshell, John expressed the following. Despite my best efforts to keep it secret, my parents found out that you're divorced when they asked why your husband wasn't coming. They are no longer comfortable with you as Mo because it won't look good to the church if my family hears about the divorce. You can be a bridesmaid, but you can't mention the divorce or your conditions at all during the wedding events. I was stunned, and I felt tears in my eyes. Stella started crying too, and she tried to spin it in a good way. This is way less stressful for you, so it's a good thing. Mill has already approved my BFF as my mo, so please don't make this any harder. I knew that I couldn't possibly stay there through an entire meal. I had to process this new information alone. I didn't speak. I just paid for my wickedly expensive cocktail and left to order an Uber home. A few hours ago, I texted Stella that I would not be at her wedding party at all. That was my decision. I wouldn't pull my daughters out, but I would only attend as a guest. She wouldn't take this as an answer, so I had to temporarily block her due to her excessive texts and calls. I sent my parents a summary of what happened and promised to call them when I was in better shape tomorrow. Stella thinks that this is a total overreaction. I don't even want to know what John thinks at this point. Please help me. Ada, edit. Thank you for all the responses. I half expected to be told to just put up with it and be a plain bridesmaid, which, while difficult, I kind of would have forced myself to do just to make Stella happy. I was just so blindsided, and I feel like I've been gut-punched, and I do need to be told if I am overreacting in a big way sometimes. I'm going to fall asleep now while binge-watching Friends, and I wonder if my twin has suddenly become an Ursula instead of a Phoebe. Edit 2. Wow. I did not expect this to blow up. I can't thank everyone enough for their input. I have a call scheduled with my parents, this afternoon from what I gather. They are extremely upset with Stella and John at the moment. Depending on how that goes, I will talk to my girls about doing something big and fun instead. The more I think about it, sitting through a mass sounds less and less appealing. I'm not even religious, and I saw this query in the comments. Yes, I had a cocktail with no alcohol. 
I use the word mocktail, but I guess its meaning is still lost to some people. Next when I asked for a list of mocktails last night, the server was a little condescending about it and said they're still called cocktails if they're not alcoholic. In the comments, I keep seeing that everyone thinks that I should pull out my daughters. I disagree. As I currently stand, I would be fine attending as a mere guest or childminder to keep my daughters on track. It would actually make it easier to not have to bring a friend with me just as a part-time babysitter for the occasion. I will not let anyone in John's family talk down to my children. If I had any sort of inkling that such a thing would happen, only then would I pull them out as flower girls. This is simply too important to my daughters for me to pull them all together. They would be crushed if they were told they couldn't go to the wedding anymore. Judgment. Not the arsehole. Update two days later. This is going to be a brief update. John found the post as he lurks on Reddit and shared it with Stella. I wish I used the fake name Ursula since she joked about that detail herself. Stella Ursula has officially called off the wedding. When John was ranting about the post and how bad the comments were painting him, he said that, Your sister must be off her G and MN meds and going manic. You better get her arse under control. But then Stella Ursula actually came undone on him and began calling out everything that John and his family had put her through. Then she took off the ring and chucked it across the living room. John went into a rage, and while he didn't do anything but yell at her, he threatened her in regards to her mobility issues. Stella Ursula uses a cane to walk. This was what triggered her to text our parents and myself. By the time our parents made it to the house, John was gone, and she had packed up her bags and left with them. Her cane was not in the house. Stella Ursula wanted to thank you all for the comments calling her out. It shattered the mosaic that John built around them. And while we're both still raw and processing the last couple days, I am glad to have my sister again. She was someone else I hardly recognized a few days ago. As kids, I was more outgoing, and she was more reserved, so I felt obliged to go along with her the other night, despite how conflicted I felt. But again, Stella Ursula says thanks for the wake-up call. And John, if you see this, F you. Edit. You know what? F you Keith. Third story. Reddit deemed OP and Ida for suspecting her daughter's boyfriend as a common for not disclosing his job. Then changed 180 after the new update. My daughter 21F started dating her current boyfriend about two years ago. She had just broken up with her ex, whom she had been with for four years, so I thought maybe it was a rebound and wasn't too worried about it. But as time went on, their relationship became more serious than I thought it was going to be. My daughter was happier and more energetic, started eating better and actually started to take care of her health, so that she could be better for him. So I wanted to get to know him more, which, in my head, seemed pretty reasonable since she is my daughter. But when I talked to her boyfriend, trying to get to know him better, for whatever reason, he was very vague, and even seemed dismissive about the topic. I thought that maybe he was just shy, so I asked my daughter about it. But she told me that he doesn't really talk about himself a whole lot, and even she didn't know a whole lot about him. Besides his few hobbies, the only thing she really knew about him were that he is either currently serving in or working with the military, travels a lot for his work, speaks at least four different languages fluently, grew up without parents as an orphan, and where he lived. And as a mother, the fact that my daughter didn't know much about her partner was an issue for me. He wasn't active on social media or anything, so I couldn't go the old name search route. So when I learned that he was either currently serving or working with the military, I asked my father, a retired vet, to talk to him. But after my father had a conversation with him, he told me that her boyfriend is fine, and that I shouldn't overthink it without any further discussion. In fact, he supports their relationship, and they seem to have become pretty close, spending time together talking in the garage, going out for drinks and food, watching old movies, and even going shooting together. I feel like I need to know more about him since he is my daughter's partner, but I also don't want to ruin anything because I can tell my daughter is happier with him than she has ever been. I've even considered a private investigator as an option. I feel like that's going a bit overboard. Should I just accept him for now and expect more details later, or what should I do? Edit 1. I was never going to hire a PI. I just mentioned it in my post to show the severity of my worry. And it is possible for a parent to be worried about their child without any other hidden agenda. I was once her age, and all I want for her is for her to live a better life than mine. Edit 2. I'm 46 years old. I haven't really tried to force him to tell me everything about him. I've asked him twice over the years and both times he just dismissed the topic. For people asking me what languages he speaks, I know he speaks English and French because those are the two I speak. My daughter has seen him speak Spanish, and she has mentioned that he has been teaching her German. 
My father has mentioned that he thinks he might know either Dari or something else. And for everyone saying that he is a guaranteed super top secret government person, I think the chances of him being a conman with a secret family halfway across the country are higher than him being Jason Bourne Jr. My daughter has on multiple occasions expressed the discomfort of not knowing much about what he is doing, but she told me she is willing to just accept it and go with it for now. Comments. One per Kundergat, in the military, speaks four languages, and is vague about personal life. Just throwing it out there, maybe his work is security sensitive. Edit. I just read that he has no social media presence. Yeah, dude is definitely doing cool government SHD lol. I had a friend who worked for the Pentagon who sounded identical to what you're describing. I still don't know what he actually does to this day. OP. Thank you honestly. This is one of the few comments that makes me feel a lot better. I don't want to be controlling, because I've been my daughter's age, so I know how I felt when my mother wanted to know everything about my life. My only worry was that my daughter knew barely anything about him. Update. One day later. I'll screw all of you, who told me that I'm a narcissistic, nosy helicopter parent. I talked to my daughter last night about my concerns. I told her that I'd always worry about her, even if she did end up hating me or pushing me away. When I told her about my concern about her relationship, I expected her to hang up or get upset at me. But instead she broke down and cried a little bit, because she also sometimes feels those worries. She told me that although he does make her happy, she feels that they haven't really grown any closer, or made any progress in the relationship. And the fact that she still didn't know a lot about his life made her overthink and stress herself out. She also told me that she had thought maybe that was cheating on her, or something since they didn't have a sexual relationship my daughter is abstinent. But he showed no real signs of cheating. We talked on the phone for about three hours, and she decided that she would invite the boyfriend over to my house this Saturday and we could ask him to tell us anything he could tell us. We don't plan on forcing him to say anything he can't. At the end of the call, my daughter told me that she loves me, and that she is lucky to have a mother like me who worries and cares about her. I also talked to my father, and told them that, although I love and trust him, I still would like to know more. He wanted to know why, and I told him, just in case the boyfriend is a conman, what are the chances he might be able to BS his way into my father's safe zone? He thought about it for a while and decided that I had a point and that he didn't want to take those chances, if there were any. So screw all of you who said that I was being an overbearing, bossy and controlling mother who will end up getting cut out of my daughter's life. My daughter thinks I'm being perfectly reasonable, and she is glad that I care about her. A lot of people on the previous post told me that he could be a special force, operation, seal, letter or spy. I honestly feel like if that really were the case, then he should be able to tell us a cover story, or just tell us that he can't talk about it rather than just dismissing the question awkwardly when it comes up. And he wasn't just doing that to me. Whenever any member of our family or one of my daughters asks him a question or something to try to get to know him, he shuts it down. And seriously, life isn't a movie. There's a higher chance of him being a weirdo who is secretly hiding a family halfway across the country than the chances of him being Bond and Bourne's love child. And to the one Redditor who told me that I should try to seduce the boyfriend, no. Just no. Edit 1. No. It wasn't my plan to interrogate the boyfriend. All I mentioned to her was my discomfort with the fact that she knew so little about her boyfriend. My daughter was the one who came up with the idea of talking to him about it, because she has the right to at least try to talk to him about it as his girlfriend. And then she asked me if I wanted to be there just to support her, and I agreed since I was planning on baking cheesecake for my daughter that day anyway. Edit 2. Some people mentioned that my attitude towards some of the comments changed compared to my first post. That's just because I ignored it at first, but I remembered that I could return the same tone and attitude I receive from others. And yes, according to some comments, I could definitely be a bee. But fortunately for me, my father didn't teach me to be a little bee. Edit 3. I'd like to make it clear to people that I didn't make my daughter go for abstinence. I wasn't abstinent, and neither was my husband. And we aren't involved in any religion or philosophy that promotes abstinence. My daughter decided that she wanted to be abstinent after her middle school sexual education because she didn't want to be a kid with a smaller kid. And no, we aren't in any school district that promotes abstinence for kids. Comments. Be wampin. You know what? This is a decent update. Nobody went nuclear and ended relationships. No one made accusations. Just be civil and respectful. And remember, you're there to provide emotional support more than to be an active player in the conversation. W33P1NG4NG3L. As someone married to a submariner that had top security clearance when he was in the Navy. Yes, even if this dude is on SEAL Team 6, he can at least tell her his job. It doesn't have to be specific. 
but in linguistics, IT, special operations, infantry, etc. He can also tell her his rank. So if he won't even tell her those, he's lying. He either isn't in the military at all, or he's got some boring, paper-pushing job. Good job trusting your gut and taking care of your baby. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.